We now start with our discussion on Unit 5 uh, in Applied Corporate Finance and we're going to look at uh, the dividend policy of companies and discuss how uh, the dividend itself uh, is an important indicator of both uh, the decision making of companies under corporate finance as well as uh, you know what uh, investors and other stakeholders could expect out of a company's uh, working right uh, so we will have to understand what are the major measures of uh, dividend what are the key determinants of dividend policy uh, what are the various schools of thought on dividend policy and how does a company really manage changes in the dividend policy I mean we'll also try and calculate how much should be the ideal dividend and how much is actually paid by the company uh, we will work on our standard companies in this uh, in this analysis and try and understand uh, what uh, what changes to dividends those companies have done understand whether they have paid enough dividend or not and then uh, case by case try and analyze if uh, more dividend is good or not right so in terms of the first principles we go back to our first idea that if you cannot find investments where you're going to make a minimum acceptable rate then the money needs to be returned to your stockholders or uh, investors right now how much cash you can return depends upon current and potential investment opportunities so we will already looked at what kind of investment opportunities exist there and how can we minimize the cost of capital in order to go and take some of those investment opportunities now assuming nothing is there then dividend becomes an important mechanism and depending on what kind of uh, expectations people have right whether is is going to come in terms of their preference for either a dividend or a buyback we will explain those terms in more detail as we go along but it's possible that sometimes stakeholders prefer dividends sometimes they prefer buyback sometimes they prefer some other modes of being returned cash but uh, it, it depends on a variety of factors which we are going to kind of consider as we go along right let's first understand what is dividend now when a firm makes profits net profit on the PL, it can choose to either retain those profits within the firm and if they retain they become source of funds if those profits are retained they go and sit under retained earnings or reserves and surplus on the balance sheet correct or they could choose to return it to the equity holders when the money is returned to the equity holders that's known as a dividend so eventually you could pay the money to the equity holder in the form of cash payments this is known as a dividend dividend typically is a cash outflow and hard cash is given to uh, to the uh, to the equity holders of the firm Thus, dividend policy becomes a very, very important part of the firm's corporate finance decision making and investor preferences for a company may change based on its dividend policy, right? So whether a company pays more dividend, less dividend, high dividend, low dividend, uh, zero dividend can shape exactly what investors expect out of it and may change investor preferences based on that, right? So let's also understand a few characteristics of dividends dividends it has been seen that dividends tend to be sticky what do we mean by sticky it means that companies usually do not cut dividends right companies usually would not cut dividends unless the financial situation is very bad why is because it sort of gives a signal that things are not in in good shape if you cut the cut the dividend so dividends tend to be sticky firms are usually conservative in dividend payments but once they start making dividend payments you will usually find that they will not cut it so the first thing we establish is dividends typically either remain stable or go up for most companies right for most companies you will see either dividends stay stable or you will see dividends will go up the second is that dividends tend to follow the earnings of a company now that's logical because technically uh, dividends are being paid out from the earnings so it's fairly straightforward to assume that dividends are going to follow the follow the earnings and as earnings keep going up so do dividends for most firms right 
dividends get impacted by taxation laws for dividends now tax laws are important because the various ways a, a promoter or an equity holder can make money is either capital gains right which is the appreciation in the stock price or via dividends and you know you could also do what is called as a buyback and if the tax treatment of all three is different then the investor would want to go with the solution which gives them the best or the you know highest amount of tax advantage in the entire scenario now tax laws are important because otherwise if you think about it let's say someone is running a firm a promoter is running a firm is also employed by the firm the promoter would not then take salary and would take most of the income in the form of dividends if there was no tax on dividends so there is going to be a tax on dividends either at the company end or in the hands of the investor remember these taxations differ by geography so for example in india if you look at the dividend tax dividend is taxed at the company end so if a company wants to pay dividend they have to pay taxes on it and then give the dividend to the investor in the hands of the investor largely dividend is untaxed so for a long long while dividend was untaxed now they have introduced a small clause we will discuss about that at a later point of time right the dividend rate also depends on the maturity of a country's economy right how stable the economy is how fast the growth of the economy is what kind of shocks the economy can take all these are defining characteristics of how the dividend policy of companies in a particular geography would appear like as discussed about the dividend across geographies let's quickly look at broadly what kind of uh, dividend deals exist across countries uh, the biggest economy of the world us is at around 2.23 percent uh, a lot of the european economies have better uh, better dividend yields typically Australia being the highest in terms of the data that we have India is around 1.47 uh, percent approximately dividend yield right so that's the data around dividend yield across various countries and as we discussed it depends on a variety of factors in terms of how stable mature the the economy is and what kind of companies are are forming bulk of the listing pattern right so because uh, who are the bigger firms will also kind of tend to uh, tell you what kind of dividend policies would uh, would exist uh, for those companies right uh, so there are a few terms and how do we measure the dividend and there are three broad ways you measure dividends it's the same number but it's denoted in three different mechanisms these are known as dividend rate dividend payout and dividend yield right now we'll take them one by one and understand how do we mention the dividend in these three measurements while the company is basically paying out one single amount right so let's understand how do we denote it the first one is dividend rate companies usually use this method to announce uh, their dividend payments right so the dividend that they're paying is announced saying that this is the dividend rate it is mentioned as a percentage of the face value of the company's stock what is the face value when the company's stock is issued it is typically issued at face value right and that face value for most companies is rupees 10 but then you can cut it down to either rupees 5 or 2 or 1 and that's what the face value is basically called as right now when you look at this uh, face value concept we look at our company apollo tires under uh, under our consideration and we say that uh, directors are pleased to recommend this is from the annual report of Apollo tires rupees 2 which is 200 percent per share of rupee 1 each so this one is the face value and since they are paying rupees 2 per share that's 200 percent of the face value that's what is called as the dividend rate note this is what the companies try to maintain because effectively that's what is the per share dividend that is being spoken about right so on a per share basis Apollo tires is paying rupees 2 dividend 
they would not want this to fall they would want this to be either stable or increasing right falling dividend rates are not considered great so typically you will see companies would uh, would kind of follow a policy where dividend rate which is announced as a percentage of your uh, face value remains either stable or increasing that's the first method of looking at things the second is what is called as dividend payout ratio right now we can calculate what is the payout ratio by dividing the amount the dividend amount by the payout uh, the payout from the profits that is happening so basically your dividend divided by the profits is going to give me the payout ratio right and 1 minus the payout is nothing but what is being retained so that's what is called as the retention ratio right so that's how we look at dividend payout numbers if we look at Apollo tires that's their consolidated profit year on year that's the amount of dividend they are paying and the tax on dividend that the company is paying now we could calculate payout ratio in two ways the shareholder or the equity holder is getting this but the company is paying this so in terms of the company the total dividend payout is 11.9 percent because one minus this is what is the reinvestment number correct and that's increased over the years remember it has to be seen in context with the with the per share value because while it appears that 12 is higher than 11 and it appears that the company seems to have reduced the dividend in reality the overall dividend has not gone down they have paid 101.8 crore and 101.8 crore which means per share dividend has remained stable even though the payout has fallen payout has fallen because they've made more profits correct so if the denominator increases even if the dividend remains the same on a per share basis you will see that the payout ratio has fallen that's fine that's not too big a problem because companies don't necessarily focus on increasing the payout ratio as we discussed they are more concerned about the dividend rate on a face value basis so per share what is the dividend paid is what companies are more focused on they're not really focused too much on the payout ratio uh, as such payout is important from understanding perspective as to how much money has gone into the firm how much money the firm is making and hence by that logic what kind of uh, returns the firm can uh, can generate correct that's what payout means we see that for our company in the case uh, payout ratio has increased a bit that's obviously because they're making a lot of profits and uh, they can they can afford uh, to kind of take the payout ratio a bit higher right finally we come to the third term which is called the dividend yield now what do we mean by the dividend yield dividend yield is nothing but you divide the company's dividend by the market price of the share correct this way it is the actual return the investor makes as a shareholder and as a, as a shareholder this is the number you should be most concerned about because practically what is the percentage return as a face value that 200 percent is meaningless i or you are going to buy the stock from the market today and what dividend the company pays in the perspective of in the in the context of what is the market value of the share that's what is going to mean a relevant value for us right so the company is paying rupees two per share note that this number was the same previous year as well and they're paying it on a market price of 217 so 2 divided by 217 which is equal to 0.92 percent this is the dividend yield why is this important is because effectively this is the number that tells us how much money the investor is actually making on that particular uh, investment purely on account of dividends right now how much dividend yield is good obviously higher the better but we saw that the overall dividend yield for Indian companies was about 1.5 percent so you will see variations of this uh, in terms of what kind of returns you make but broadly dividend yield of 3 to 4 percent in emerging markets is considered very very good 
most companies pay around one to one and a half percent in India. So anything beyond two and a half, three percent is considered really good, right? So those are the three measures. The company has basically paid rupees two per share. Uh, and we have arrived at what is going to be the payout, what is the dividend rate, and what is the dividend yield. So rate is 200%, payout is dividend by profit, that's about close to 11%, and yield is 0.92%. That's what we have arrived at in terms of what is the dividend value or how do we measure the dividend for any particular company. Right. Then there are decision makings in terms of when is the dividend being paid out. So sometimes the dividend gets paid out during the year. Sometimes it gets paid at the end of the year. What is declared during the year is known as interim dividend. And what is paid at the end or declared at the end of the year is called as the final dividend. Typically interim dividend comes with quarterly results usually. That's a way of rewarding your shareholders all through the year. So here we have uh, MRF tires under consideration and you see that uh, what is their total dividend. The combined dividend uh, for the year is going to be the sum of all interim dividends plus the final dividend. So for 2014 you see these three are the dividends then these three are the dividends and these three are the dividends here we are seeing 100 rupees per share 44 and 6 is going to be 50 rupees per share 30 rupees per share so increasing value you will note that that's 940 percent which means face value is 10 so the company has actually paid 1000 percent in terms of dividend rate the yield is only 0.23 because the stock price is around 43,000 today and uh, when you look at the payout ratio for that we obviously need the profits of the company as well and the number of shares that are outstanding for the company as well. So that's what we mean by dividend interim and final. When you look at the payout of uh, payout ratio of uh, the BSE 100 companies interestingly you find that the net profit for most of these companies over the last 10 years or so has gone up a lot and so has the dividend payment but most interestingly the payout ratio has increased considerably over this period right so over a period companies have made a lot of profits they've made a lot of profits the profits number have gone up and they have consistently increased the dividend you will see that even though profits have fallen here the dividends have actually continued to increase that signifies two or three things one obviously companies don't like to cut dividends to on balance profit fall might be a temporary phenomenon during this year but companies want to kind of keep increasing dividends even in this year for example you see a profit dip but overall dividend paid out continued to be strong during that period as well correct so total payout ratio is about 34.52 percent on average yield is about 1.47 percent on average that's the data that we have for BSE 100 companies right let's take a sample question company has a face value of 10 dividend rate of 50 percent shares outstanding at uh, 20 crores profits at 100 crore and a share price of rupees 200 what is the dividend yield dividend rate and dividend payout ratio so dividend rate is 50 percent which means dividend per share is rupees 5 correct so on on a 10 rupee share 5 on 20 crore shares is going to give me total dividend at 5 rupees 20 crore shares so rupees 100 crore that puts my payout ratio or dividend payout ratio at 100 by 400 because my profit is 400 that's 25 percent share price is 200 that means the yield is going to be 5 divided by 200 that's 2.5 percent that's my dividend yield so that's my dividend payout at 25 percent dividend yield at 2.5 percent and dividend rate at 50 percent in terms of calculations that's how you go about calculating dividends that's basically what we had to cover in this particular section as we end a couple of quick questions around this what are the key characteristics of dividend 
and a quick numerical a company has a face value of rupees 10 dividend rate of 30 percent shares outstanding at 10 crore profits at rupees 200 crore and a share price of rupees 100 what is the dividend yield dividend rate and dividend payout ratio thank you